In chemistry, we're going to see situations where a molecule, an entire molecule itself, might be neutral. But because of the differences in electronegativities and how the molecules are structured, you might have a partially positive charge on one side and a partially negative charge on another side. And the most famous example of that is a water molecule. A water molecule, you have three molecule, water molecules depicted here with the white oxygen molecule in the center and the two hydrogens right over here. And this is the shape of the water molecule. Sometimes you'll see it with these electron pairs on the, on the other end from the oxygen from those, from those hydrogens. But what's interesting, at least in the course of this discussion, about a water molecule is even though the entire molecule is neutral, you have a total of 10 protons and 10 electrons in total, even though it's neutral, because of this shape and because uh, the oxygen is more electronegative, you can end up with a, a more positive charge on one end and a more negative charge on the other end. And just to reinforce this, we look at the periodic table and we know in general as we go to the top right, we get more and more electronegative. And oxygen is one of the most electronegative of the elements. It's a good bit more electronegative than hydrogen right over here. And so in this situation, in this water molecule, the electrons in the covalent bond between the hydrogen and the oxygen are actually going to spend more time, are going to spend more time around the oxygen. I could draw it something like something like this. They're going to spend more time around here because Oxygen likes to hog the electrons more than the hydrogen does. And so what it would do is it form a, you could say, a partial negative charge at the side of the molecule away from the hydrogens and a partial positive charge on the sides where the hydrogens are. And this situation where you have a separation of positive and negative charges within a molecule, this is called a molecular dipole. Let me write that down. Molecular, molecular dipole. And in a physics class, you might study the general idea of a dipole. And this is an electric dipole, where you have a separation of your positive and negative charges. In this case, we call it a molecular dipole, because it's of course across the short space of an actual molecule. This should not be confused with a magnetic dipole, which we might also talk about in other videos. Now, in a water molecule, the dipole is a permanent dipole because we're not changing electronegativities here. The oxygen just likes to hog those electrons more. And so this situation, let me write this. This is a permanent, permanent dipole. And because of the, this permanent dipole amongst these water molecules, that's what allows these water molecules to be attracted to each other. So this molecule right over here, this end is going to be partially negative. This part end is going to be partially positive. This lowercase delta here is how we denote that partial charge. And those look like eights. Let me write them a little bit neater. So partially negative and partially positive right over here. This would be partially positive, partially positive partially negative. And so because of this permanent dipole of the water molecules, you can have attraction. The partially negative char sides are going to be attracted to the partially positive charges. And these are the famous hydrogen bonds of water. So that is of H2O. So that's going to be, yeah, I drew most of the attraction that you see over there. Now all molecular dipoles don't have to be permanent. So here is a depiction of some methane molecules. Methane is CH4. And you see in methane that the carbon is bonded somewhat symmetrically. You have this tetrahedral shape where the, the hydrogens are evenly distributed. They're getting as far away as they can from each other. So there's not, there, it's a very symmetrical in three dimensions shape. And also carbon and hydrogen's electronegativities aren't that far apart. Carbon is a little bit more electronegative. But because they're close and there's this symmetry to the actual molecule, there isn't a, a permanent dipole in this situation. 
However, you have to remember these electrons are that are that are buzzing around between these bonds and around the nuclei of the different atoms, they 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 aren't just staying in one place. At any given time, you might have you might have some of the electrons more on this side of more on this side of this of this molecule. And so you'll have a temporary partial negative charge there, maybe a temporary partially positive charge there. And that might be at the exact same time that this molecule, that this molecule right over here has this molecule right over here. Maybe its electrons happen to be more distributed more in that direction. So it's partially negative, partially negative there and partially positive here. And so when you have just these these random dipoles form at just a certain moment in time, just based on at that moment how the electrons are distributed, we call that a temporary dipole. Temporary dipole. And those temporary dipoles can create these temporary forces between molecules. And we studied that in other videos, the famous London dispersion forces. Right at the moment that this one is partially negative and this one is partially positive, Maybe that's right at the moment that this one is partially negative at this side and partially positive at this side, so the electrons are spending a little bit more time here, and so they might be attracted to each other. And not only could it just be a temporary thing, it could also be induced. If this one just happens to be in that state and it's partially positive on this side, well, the electrons here on this molecule will be naturally attracted, so it might be an induced dipole. And you could have, uh, to be more explicit, Induced dipoles because of an external force of, of the environment, like a, an electric field. You could have an induced dipole. Let's say you have a let's say you have a molecule of H2O right over here, and let's say you have a molecule of neutral neutral methane right over here. And that neutral methane, you know, its electrons are moving around, but it has no permanent dipole. But as it gets near this water molecule right over here. Well, it has a permanent dipole where it has a positive charge here, so maybe the methane molecules electrons might be attracted more to that to that positive charge. And so this situation where you would take something that otherwise would only maybe have temporary dipoles, but because its electrons might be attracted to something or repelled from something, here you could have an induced you could have an induced dipole. And dipoles actually don't just happen to be with multi-atom molecules. You can even have not permanent dipoles, but you could have induced or temporary dipoles from a single atom. Let's say we were to take an atom of argon. The noble gases are famously non-reactive. So let's say that this is one atom of argon. Let's say that's its electron cloud. Let's say that's its nucleus there, and this is a huge oversimplification. And you could imagine at just some random point, the electrons are just a little bit more distributed on that side. And so you have this temporary dipole that would form, where you're more negative here and more po positive right over here. And of course, if this is next to something, they, they might be able to interact with each other. If this is maybe, you can even induce this. It might not be random. It might be induced by a, by a polar molecule nearby, something with a, po a permanent dipole. Or it might be induced by a magnetic field. Well, I'll leave you there. But this idea of molecular dipoles, whether they're permanent, induced, or temporary, it's a really neat idea because it actually explains a lot of the properties of molecules, their boiling points, their freezing points, uh, how hard it is to get them to uh, get into a gaseous state versus a liquid versus a solid state. And we'll see a lot of that in chemistry.